Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're hailing from. Welcome to another episode of Red Hat Enterprise Linux Presents. I am Chris Short, host of with the most of all things Red Hat live streaming. I am joined by Mr. Red Hat Enterprise Linux himself, Scott McBrien, and Eric, the IT guy. There's a story behind that. Both of them, probably. But uh, welcome, Narendev, back to the channel. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, Scott, what are we talking about today, buddy? I thought today we'd talk a little bit about Network Manager. Um, I still run into people that are like, can't we install a networking and get rid of that Network manager thing? Because uh-huh. I think that they remember Network Manager in like Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6. That's which was, my memory of, yeah. Yeah. And, and to be fair, like it, it wasn't fully baked then maybe. Mm-hmm. No. Um, and it was a big departure from what we knew and loved with, uh, with configuration files and stuff. But we closed that gap significantly in 7. And in RHEL 8, Network Manager is the default. And mm-hmm. Networking is still distributed but it's deprecated and not recommended anymore. Right. So I just wanted to like touch base on network manager and kind of the tools that we use for working with it. And maybe, uh, maybe I'll play the crusty sysadmin with Eric and he can tell me how great it is. And I'll just tell him how horrible it is. And then he can tell <laughs> me why I'm all wrong. So I am, I am here for this ride. <laughs> <laughs> But a programming note, folks. Um, so, it, I mean, do you want to say it, Scott, or do you want me to say it? Right. Yeah, sure. Um, so a lot of people probably have not yet noticed, but the level up hour has changed hosts. Yes. Um, Langdon White, uh, unfortunately, is no longer with Red Hat. He's moved to pursue a career in academia. Um, and so I've moved over there to be one of three hosts on the level up hour um and because of that uh mr eric Hendricks is going to be taking over the red hat enterprise linux presents live stream with el senor short yes i will still be here eric tell us what you do here at red hat and also what you do on the side <laughs> definitely yeah um great to be here um uh i guess a longtime fan first time caller um, ironically, that that's the uh, the chance I get to uh, to kind of try and, and follow Scott and, and uh, uh, kind of help make this live stream uh, continue to provide the the great information that it has. Uh, so I am a technical marketing manager here at Red Hat. I work with uh, Scott and team to produce a lot of the content, uh, some of the tech tip videos, the release notes, things like that uh, here at Red Hat for all things Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, and then um, before that, I was in sales uh, for about two and a half years. Uh, I worked for Red Hat, for GitLab. And before that, I spent close to a decade as a systems administrator. I've worked on Ubuntu, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS. Um, I, I used to run Arch, by the way, uh, on, my, on my home systems. Wow. Um, so a little bit of everything, uh, Linux and open source. And then uh, before coming to Red Hat, I actually kicked off a podcast. Uh, it's called The Pseudo Show. Uh, quick disclaimer, it has no... Uh, <laughs> nice to see you too. Uh, keeping an eye on my ch- on the chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, quick disclaimer, The Pseudo Show is not affiliated with Red Hat, uh, but uh, glad to be doing that show as well as this one. Uh, to to talk about rel so glad to be here we're happy to have you uh and i'm pulling up a link for the pseudo show to drop in chat right now as soon as i find it but in the meantime network manager the thing that some people used to loathe but should now come to love (laughs) yeah and and so like uh here we go eric i'm i'm gonna be the the trusty sysadmin ready you gotta get tell me how wrong I am. Oh, I don't use that. I, I need to be able to edit files to make my changes to my network config, and it doesn't do that. <laughs> I wanted to play the crusty sysadmin, but you know that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> uh, so with Network Manager, it allows you to right from the command line make all the changes to any of your network information or to your network devices. It allows you to pull up network information. Uh, so you can see link status, you can see what the primary protocol is, whether that's static or DHCP. So 
the the problem with the IF config files uh, under Etsy sys sysconfig network dash scripts Networking. Yeah, huh, huh. is first off uh, tab complete is pain when you try and go there because there's several folders that that fit under there. But uh, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've gotten lost going down that path. But yeah, yep. But the uh, the the real problem with the IF config files is there are so many options. Some of them are a little bit uh, obscure. Some of them uh, don't really. Uh, some of them do multiple things. So it's it it can be kind of a pain to try and keep a consistent network configuration across your entire enterprise. So what Network Manager allows you to do is allows you to set up uh, connections and, and set your set your interfaces to come up or come down at certain times. Uh, so, uh, and, and you don't have to keep track of all those files anymore. Network Manager kind of handles that for you. In fact, if you've looked at RHEL 7, RHEL 8, and you go to the network dash scripts directory, uh, there's usually a config file in there for like uh, loopback or, or your primary uh, Ethernet uh, port that says that this, this, uh, this interface is actually managed by Network Manager. Do not touch this file. Yeah, and I will even go as far to say in Fedora 34, there's nothing there. <laughs> so that's, I, that's a great point yeah. I will tell you that um, I can't speak to Fedora because like, I don't use that on my primary box um, you can't edit the configuration files even though they're managed by network manager and it's fine like you can update the, the settings in there and network manager as though by magic picks up the change because unlike Almost the olden like days, real daemon. I know, right? <laughs> uh, so in the in the olden days, like the real six days when it was not the greatest, yeah. What ended up happening was we stood up like a parallel infrastructure for Network Manager under a completely different directory, and it had its own files actually under there that managed, mm. yep. um, but it didn't talk to the other files. So as soon as you ran Network Manager, it like forked over to this other place and other set of configs. And then if you went to the place that you knew already and made changes, they weren't reflected because they weren't in the place that the manager was looking. And right. in RHEL 7, we fixed that. So the config files are still there. And there is a database of stuff that Network Manager maintains elsewhere. But Network Manager also pays attention to those files. So if you go in and edit the files, it gets reflected in the, the data that Network Manager has access to as well. Um, you know, there, there are often several different ways to do things, as, as Eric pointed out, like setting subnet mask, you can set the net mask, or you can set the prefix. Network Manager knows all of those. Um, and so all the stuff that was documented in the init scripts documentation, which is what was the holder of all the lexicon of Rosetta Stone for those settings, um, you know, network manager does all that plus 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 way more. Um, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So so for the people that are like, I like editing files. You could still edit the files. Mm -hmm. I'm not stopping you from editing files. Do it, but be aware that there's more that you're missing by editing files. Even if that's the way you were doing. If you want to copy files to other boxes, and that's cool too. Like network manager will be able to hang, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. All and right. it's a service as opposed to just a script that runs at boot time and then never runs again. Yes, right. that is kind of the advantage, right? Like having it there to manage all the things all the time, not just at boot or when you restart networking, which mm -hmm. if you're SSHing into the box, that is a whole ball of wax of chicken and egg that you don't want to play. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah. But yeah. So, so go ahead. I, I was just going to share my lab screen. Have it. All right. So you guys can Yay see this. Yay. All right. Um, so one of the other TMMs on my and Eric's team, his name's Jarrett. He wrote this networking basics lab um, in his admin 101 series. So if you're interested, it's on lab.redhat.com. I'm sure short will paste the uh, about to drop link in there shortly. Right now, yeah. uh, and it's about using NMCLI. But before we do that, just a small ad. Um, 
we can see that this box has two net, uh, Ethernet interfaces, ENS3 and ENS5. All right, we can see the settings that have been applied and from all. All right, we can take a look at this uh, this config file and we could edit it and everything would be fine, just like it was in the olden days. In the olden days. <laughs> the olden days. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that was my first point. Eric, I'll, I'll let you kind of direct where we want to go next. You want to go to uh, talk about the cockpit integration or do you want to talk about uh nmcli like well that's yeah let's let's start on the command line then then uh, we can kind of talk about cockpit and by, while you're Fine. thinking about that let me make sure make sure that's there there's not a separate module for networking is there I believe it's part of the base, but you know what? Let's let's look. I think it may be cockpit dash network. Uh, cockpit dash network manager. There you go. I don't see Maybe it in my list. Already installed? No. Okay. Hmm. Weird. If we need to, I can pull up my uh, my home server. Yeah. I mean, it should be there. Here, let me just start it up. In theory, it should be there. <laughs> Works on my machine. Exactly. <laughs> Worked on my laptop. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you guys aren't uh, listening to the rain pounding against my, my office windows. I'd rather have rain than the freaking bajillion degrees and 4,000% humidity we have today. It's uh, 90, 90. No, it's not right. No, 90, 90. 90. Yeah. Yep. Well, well, Too many redirects. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> this is a quick PSA to reset your password every so often. Well, he's using the lab instance, so yeah. On our other um, five hundred error, ouch. On our other ones, we actually reset it as part of the initial um, script, so like that's not a problem. But these images are more than ninety days old, and so. Um, yeah. All right, here. Here's what we're going to do. I'm just going to be stupid. You be stupid. <laughs> oh, that's right. You're rude. <laughs> there we go. Problem solved. <laughs> Yay, bad practices. <laughs> well, he, he did say he was going to be the crusty old sysadmin. That's so. true, he did, yeah. He, he warned us. He did warn us. Right. Yeah. I've got root. Screw it. I'll make this <laughs> less secure. Why not? Marketing. Um, <laughs> I do see networking, so it's definitely yeah. part of the package now, it looks like. All right, so I'll leave this be because you said you wanted to do uh, CLI first. We'll just leave it in the background there. All right, so command is nm CLI. What do we want to do? You want to list what we got? Yeah, let's just see what connections we've got first. Okay, so if we do a tab tab, there's our options for our next argument. So you want to do a connection. Tab, tab. No. I was about to say. Yeah, I love uh, bash completion. It's it's yeah. like the best. It's part of my Ansible build script for every one of my machines here at home. Oh, install Ansible or 
just short Fast shot files Fast everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. So there's system ENS3. That's the one that we saw with um, this guy, IPA. This stands right here. Uh, and so one of the kind of interesting things about uh, NMCLI, at least from my perspective, is that it deals with the connections rather than IPs, which we're used to dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we wanted to talk about this interface, we can refer to it as system ENS3 in the NMCLI command. And that's a little bit of a change for us uh, crusty system admins. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right. So, what is the system one versus the wired one, though? Why are they different colors? So, wired connection one um, has not been configured at all. Okay. And that's why it's just like there is a thing out there that you could plug things into, but it has nothing on it. Okay. Um, and in fact, if we look at, let me just double check here. Before I say, in fact, let me verify that it actually is a fact. When in doubt, go to Sysconfig Network something. <laughs> oh, no, I was hoping it would have a uh, connection name, but that's also in the NMCLI info. Hmm. Well, in ENS5 uh, is part of the lab. Uh, one of the steps is to give it an IP address. Yeah. Oh, so you want to oh. just run through the lab? Well, there you go. Yeah. Let's do the lab. Might as well. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, cool. So, so um, Jira started off by just looking at the devices on the system. So NMCLI device is, a little bit, is looking by device name instead of by connection name. So that's ENS3, ENS5. So it just kind of organizes the display a little bit differently. Uh, and then we flip over to looking at the connection and um, we run this command, which is connection add, connection name is ethernet one. The interface that goes along with it is ENS5. Okay. And the type is Ethernet. And notice that it says uh, that it was successfully added here. Cool. So now if I look at the device, I see some of the properties on it that were different than last time. Right? It actually has like a name, mm -hmm. right? That said make a connection named Ethernet 1. So that's down here. Um, and then guess what? For us crusty system administrators, we okay. It's the Ethernet one. Yeah, I was gonna say. Oops. There you go. We, hey, we got the config that. file, right? So you can edit the config file too and do the same stuff. All right. So on the next step, why don't we uh, why don't we edit that file? And because uh, I think we're changing from uh, DHCP to uh, static. Okay. And we can show off how to how to reload the config. All right. So, uh, what do you want to put here for boot proto? Uh, let's do static. Static. So, fun fact. Um, the only words for boot proto that actually mean something are DHCP and boot me. Boot me? Boot P. Boot P. Oh, okay. Yeah, which is another dynamic protocol for. Yeah, which standards. hasn't been used how long. Anyways, yeah. I can't say I've ever run into a boot P network, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we typically will see static. Mm. You may also see people use the word none because there is no boot protocol for dynamically assigning the IP on this address. But honestly, you could set it to like fluffy McButterpants and it would really mean <laughs> static. Because <laughs> the only words he that actually do anything are- No, now you have to try it. Fluffy McButterpants, put it in. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> there you go. Mm-hmm. All right, what's uh, what's next? All right, let's uh, scroll down here in your your description or in the the lab instructions. I didn't look up the IP address before we went into the config file. So looks like we're on a 172 network. Yeah, 0.9. Um, Prefix is 32. Right. We could also do a knit mask 255, 255, 255, whatever. I guess 255 for 32. Oh, the 254. Um, all right and then i think that's probably all we absolutely need typically we'd also want to see maybe gateway to be able to route outside of this network um somebody i'm I'm gonna play stump the chump with the other hosts what else would you maybe like to see in here can't be this. It's not this. It's always this. Uh, usually, I make sure there's a gateway in there. Yeah. yeah. The Sometimes the DNS server. DNS. Uh, yes. Say. Yeah. Can't be DNS. It's not DNS. It was DNS. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. So there we go. Um, and in the lab, they're actually using NMCLI to make those changes, right? Um, oh, and he adds a gateway in there. Here, let's just let's just do it with NMCLI. Oh, we need to turn it on first to be able to do that. Maybe. Did I, did I mess it up? It's a moment of truth right here. I mean... Uh, is the sky blue? Oh, is, also true. Maybe, maybe nice. Fluffy McButterpants is, is actually a known bug. <laughs> yeah, so the box is still there. That's good. It's plus. Hmm. Maybe Fluffy McButterpants isn't what you should have put in. <laughs> I'll put in what I like, Chris Short. It's, it's my last show. I'll do what I want. You're not the boss of me anymore. So you are. <laughs> so I, I would like to point out the error there. Yeah. Gateway, gateway cannot be set if there are no addresses configured. But you configured an address. Let's take a look. Did you that. not? So let's let's see if changing it to static actually fixes it. Yeah. And that might be a holdover from my knowledge of uh of uh network scripts. Yeah, apparently Fluffy McButterpants does break things. Yes. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> Shocking. We'll, we'll put that in as a feature request. Uh, just don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we'll, we'll add the gateway there. Boom. All right. So if we do a IPA. So it looks like it assigned the right IP. And if we do an NMCLI connection show, so there's my ENS5 and... Um, then to your point, uh, Chris, now they're both green. Uh, since they both have an IP, they have valid configurations and they've got a connection. All right, and when I, no, sorry. Go ahead. Went too fast. No, you're fine. I'm trying to type and keep up at the same time. There we go. <laughs> All right, so they're both green. I like green. Green is good, right? Green is good. All right. It's not and as much fun as red, though. True. <laughs> but in this case, red <laughs> could be bad. All right, so if we do a show on just not in general, but actually on an individual interface, 
uh, or connection, as the case may be, it actually shows us all the additional settings that could be applied to this interface, um, which in the past, to Eric's point very early in the show, right, you would have to know all of the um, configuration parameters to set in your individual file ahead of time in order to utilize them. Whereas here you're showing them all and then you can make changes with an MCLI. But I'm looking for my IP, so we're down here, IP. You have an IPv6? Hmm. I, I do not. Well, there, there's a, a conversation going on in the chat that, you know, it's it's a real shame that Network Manager is only for Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is some of the stuff from the, you know, the legacy days. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, this was going to come up at some point. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, as, as, a, as a sysadmin, I I was one of those people who was IFCFG only up yeah. until about RHEL 7. Seven two somewhere in that time frame, it's like let's let's try it, and I to be honest, I've never gone back. Although I should I should caveat that I I've never gone back until I started using the web UI and it, the the web UI is amazing. Using cockpit to manage my mm -hmm. networking, mm -hmm. it's so much easier than yeah than either, like even network manager. So for my cluster here at home, right, it's all sitting on one Dell R820 in the basement. And it's like, I need a bridge. I need multiple interfaces. Da, 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 da. It was all done through cockpit. And it was just easy as it could be. It's like, you want a bridge? What IP do you want it to have? Oh, you want to use DHCP? Okay, that's fine. You know, set up a reservation for DHCP and the network devices and done. Just all went back. And I think a couple of shows ago, we were talking about how um, Web Console, aka Cockpit, like it gets a bad rap because we tend to position it as like, oh, it's for the new guys. Um, and in reality, like it just makes life easier for so many things. Like, mm -hmm. sure, you could do the 10 steps necessary to grow your LVM file system through the command line. I know the commands, you know the commands, we could do that. Or you can go into the web console, mm -hmm. highlight the thing, click grow file system. There's a slider so you can grow it to whatever <laughs> size you want, as yeah. opposed to being like, wait, how big is it again? Oh, now I need to go back out and like, look at the command to see how much space is left in the device. Oh, and rounding or- Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh God. Oh, right? back when you had there's 760 megabytes of free space. Why? <laughs> oh, we had to round up to the nearest whole logical extent, which makes right, exactly. it big. I'm sorry, fail. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Oh. And so it's like, you use the slider, you click, you know, grow and done. Um, and I think networking is probably one of those two. Like mm -hmm. it's a complex task that has a lot of parameters that you can mm -hmm. work through the web console interface pretty easily, even though, you're an experienced administrator. Did, did we get cockpit, cockpit working on the system? We did. Yes, we did. Um, this, with, uh, with some of the newer versions of cockpit, there's even a performance uh, graph on the network and networking configuration page. So if you're in there making, uh, making changes, you can see exactly how your, how your system's performing from the sending and receiving perspective. So programming note. Um, Massive line of thunderstorms are coming in here. Uh, should be here right as the show ends. So if all of a sudden I disappear, show's over. <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, uh, if I, we shouldn't lose power or anything, but after last, well, after the last series of thunderstorms that were really big like this came through, I assume nothing anymore. Well, I mean, you know what assuming does. Mm hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, I live right next to the, I'm on the hospital's grid, yet I went without power for two days. Why? Oof. Because the hospital has 72 hours of generator. <laughs> so the power company knew it had two days, maybe three tops. 
I, I see in the chat uh, Conan Kudu is just like chumming the troll waters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, all right, here we are in uh, in the web interface for, yeah, uh, for networking. That. You can yeah. even configure your firewall on there. I'm, I'm yes. looking at like adding a bond or a team. Like, mm -hmm. good night. That used to be 37,000 commands. Well, I remember having to instantiate bonds using Puppet. Oof. Not trivial. <laughs> I mean, doing it on the command line with like loading your, adding the correct config to each component interface, plus right. creating a new config for the bonded interface, plus passing the parameters to the kernel for the uh -huh. kernel module, mm -hmm. like uh -huh. that, that is also not trivial. Yeah. None of that was trivial. Oh, out of VLAN? Man, I was just doing that the other day. That's pretty sweet. So my uh, my home lab is single server, mm -hmm. and it's big big shock. It's running RHEL 8.4, and I use Cockpit to manage everything on that box. Most of my lab itself is virtualized. Uh, so between, between uh, setting up all the virtual machines through Cockpit and doing all the networking, it was so nice after... after I, I was one of those sysadmins who would who would grab a a blog post off the internet that worked for me to get a certain thing set up like like a network bond and right. I'd save it into uh, Evernote or yeah, more yeah whatever Joplin, it was yeah, yeah just so I would never lose that blog post I didn't want that person to go you know what I I don't want to blog anymore and then I'm screwed <laughs> because I'd have to go read the documentation I did I did the exact same <laughs> thing back when I was a sysadmin I used to like I'm sure if I open up my Evernote account now you would just find like gobs <laughs> of like daily notes and blogs and stuff that i read and you know scripts that i knew were good templates to you know copy yes. and everything. yeah <laughs> just all kinds of <laughs> yeah and then i went to set up I, I went to rebuild my lab environment of, just a few months ago and it's like cockpit networking bond i want this interface i want this ip range activate sat back and went that's going to break isn't it a few seconds later the the cockpit uh ui refreshed everything worked i was like well i I'm just done. i'm just going to log out <laughs> i set myself like two hours for this it took two minutes this is amazing i'm just going to go to sleep <laughs> so there's there's bonding and there's teaming do we want to talk about the difference or not i mean there's Functionally, they operate very similar. Right? It's taking yes. more than one network interface, tying them together into a single um, a single connection. Mm -hmm. Bonding is the older method that uses a kernel module mm -hmm. um, and has been around for a really long time. Works Teaming well. uses a daemon called mm -hmm. TeamD. And, um, it sucks up an entire CPU the second you turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no, I can prove it. <laughs> Fair. Because it's doing a lot of like it's doing the networking. Yeah. You got to dedicate a right. core basically to networking, which let's right. face it, network devices have specialized ASICs, right? Like the fact that it's only taking one core is kind of special. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and if you're coming from a Microsoft background, probably teaming is more similar to your existing experience because mm -hmm. it looks really similar. The configuration settings and parameters that are passed is very familiar. If you're coming from a Microsoft background on making network interfaces appear as one. Um, and then they also have some additional aggregation modes, if I remember correctly, in teaming yes. that are not there in bonding. So... Yeah, um, I, I wish teaming were around when I had to do bonds. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Minus the CPU and in, in, uh... well, I mean, configuration wise, like back, you know, it, there's billions of CPUs in my data center back then, so I didn't necessarily care about CPU usage. I would just go get another blade server and fill it up with you know VMs. <laughs> And teaming is still relatively new to RHEL. We introduced it in Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. And by relatively new, that's like, you know, seven and a half years ago. Um, 
but we've carried it forward into Route 8 as well. Yeah. Cool. So what else can we do? So I was thinking yeah. that it might be a fun way to end my term on Red Hat Enterprise Linux Presents uh, with an, an interview question that I always ask candidates. Mm, I'm here for those. All right. So I always As long as ask, I can ask you my favorite one. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'd be a leaf. My, I would be the color green. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I always ask interview candidates uh, a time that they made a mistake mm -hmm. and what they learned from it. So, uh, so I'll go me. first. Okay. I'll, I'll break the ice, right? Rather than putting uh, you and Eric on the spot. So in, in my younger days, uh, I worked for Red Hat, and, uh, Red Hat Training and Certification. And I was putting together the um, update for a new release of RH300 the RHCE Rapid Track Bootcamp course. And I'd been given a week to update it from its previous release. Mm -hmm. it, it's not a small class. So mm -hmm. I had been banging away at it for a while. And it was due on a Monday. So of course mm -hmm. I had worked through the weekend to, to do it because I'm terrible at planning things. And um, I was putting together the final PDF render so that I could upload it to the printer on Monday like the print shop that did our book creation all right. day. Yeah. It was like four in the morning on a Sunday. <laughs> and it was rendering. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going ahead and clean up my directory structure here with all my temp files and work in progress stuff. And, and you can imagine where I'm going with this story. Oh, Nothing ever goes wrong at, at 4 a.m. on a Sunday. No. Right, right. So I deleted mm. the files that I had finalized and were being rendered into PDFs, thereby right. deleting all of the work that I had done in the last week. Um, and let me guess, you didn't version control them. Oh, no. I would of want to do not. such a silly no. thing. No. I mean, be... granted, this is also Man. a really long time ago. So okay, um, our version control <laughs> interface at the time was uh, um, Copy. CBS. Okay. Yeah, like there wasn't even subversion at the time. Like <laughs> that was a long time ago. Okay. Yeah, Never mind. Was a long time. <laughs> but yeah, so um, so I ended up like literally staying up for so many two straight hours after that to recreate all the work that had taken me a prior week to create. Um yeah, but so what I learned from that was number one, don't do things at four o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. And number two. Wait until you have your final work product complete before you do anything else. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Um, I'll answer the question with don't take your coworker who just wrote a custom Perl script to help identify files that need to be deleted on the file system because that coworker could also have typoed it to list all files on a file system, which the file system was a net app and it literally filled up the net app just listing files <laughs> on the file system um <laughs> and you know all their properties and everything else kind of thing yeah don't start that script and then go to lunch yeah. because when you fill up a storage device <laughs> for a major you know company it pretty much grinds everything to a halt at that point and nothing else can happen until <laughs> someone goes and looks and says why are all these volumes full. <laughs> oh my God. What is this big ass file here? Get it out of here. Yeah. Oh, and then when the pager started going off, you're like, oh yeah. No, oh, when the pager went off, it was away. pretty much like, uh, well, it's time to go guys. Uh, Brad here has done something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Yeah. By the way, Brad, um, yeah, your, your, your script just finished. <laughs> yeah, and everything's done. And Well, it finished <laughs> because I couldn't write anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll share mine. There's, there's something bad about just working when you're not working. Uh, I, there's, mm -hmm. there's a theme here today because uh, there was a time I was working as a sysadmin and I had the very simple task of we want some archive files off of a... Uh, Atlassian HipChat server because HipChat was was this great 
great instant messaging platform where the the brilliant idea was you kind of had to reinstall it more or less that was the upgrade process yeah although as, database uh, and that's yeah, yeah yeah exactly that was the upgrade process although folks got kind of savvy later on and realized that i could just clone the vm do the upgrade and then just swing to the new vm right mm -hmm. so we did that and then someone realized oh wait we didn't copy all the archive data over so let's just let's just power up the old vm grab those files drop it on the new vm and you know no big deal right it's like sure well uh i'm going to lunch here in 15 so i'll tell you what i'll just i'll power up the vm i'll i'll come you know, back you can lunch and handle it yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. while we're at lunch Jeez. all of a sudden hip chat goes down i can't imagine why no, nothing i did <laughs> no so we we got to leave lunch early that day came back to the office and go figure I needed to change the MAC address on the old VM because we didn't want any interruption, any issues with the load balancer, because that means opening a ticket with the networking team mm -hmm. to change the load balancer. So yeah. we'll just we'll keep the same MAC address. We'll just swing it over to the new VM. No problems, right? Well, brilliant me forgot to change the MAC address. So I shut it down, <laughs> removed the networking uh, interface completely. <laughs> and then used one of VMware's tools to get to the virtual machine's <laughs> disk. Said, I am not touching this thing ever again. Ever again. <laughs> Downloaded it to my desktop, uploaded it to the team drive, and just... Off we go. I think I called in sick for the afternoon. It's just probably a good idea. I'm not sure why hey, chat just stopped working. <laughs> yeah, what did you learn? Uh, don't use HipChat. <laughs> Which is ironic since it's I don't I don't think it's uh I don't think it's, it's an active product anymore. <laughs> I mean I remember maintaining the HipChat server. Uh, I, it was yeah. nice for what it was, but the upgrade process was the, was painful. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> it was very painful because it literally meant reinstalling. Uh the first link is a Wikipedia page. Let's see. When did it go end of life? Oh, doesn't say. On Maybe September it's still seventh, twenty seventeen. Atlassian discontinued the cloud-based HipChat, replacing it with HipChat successor called Stride. Okay, there you go. Good to know. The client-hosted HipChat data center continued to be supported, so there's potentially people still running it. Maybe. Hmm. I mean, there's still people running Jabber and a variety of other things that are old. Sure. Uh, so my interview question. Okay. LS has a lot of flags, right? Just a simple LS command. In Linux, what is the one letter that isn't a flag? Ooh. Uh, case does not matter, correct? It could. Case does matter. Yes. So it's... You're including both upper and lower case in your question. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. I'd like to phone a friend. Well, in don't case, phone a friend that's page. using a Mac or anything BSD based. <laughs> I've got my 432 <laughs> box here. I want to. I want to call the the man page. Yeah, no, it's actually capital E, and that might no longer be the case, to be honest with you, because uh, that is kind of old info. Um, but I actually answered that right one time. Just by guessing. Yeah. So I was like, what is the letter not... that I've never used? Capital E. And yeah, that was it. I guessed the correct answer for the interview. That's how I got the job. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> so capital E is still not used, nor still is lowercase e. Mm -mm. It was okay. So I just said E, I think, back then. And he you now clarified, I think it's capital E. But yes, you're right. So neither E is used. But in BSD versions, of os's it is used it is a flag that i learned too uh when i asked the question of someone that was a heavy mac user <laughs> so yeah. uh, j is also not used ah okay so there's more than one letter so i guess i guess scott neither you or i got the job no you and failed. y is not used Hmm. Really? Hmm. Not I mean, what questions would you have to answer yes to for an LS? Would you like Are... to list this file? Yes. <laughs> Only if Clippy pops up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Clippy, how I miss you.
<laughs> he was always happy to see me. Always. I was never happy to see Clippy, though. <laughs> right. Oh, I guess if we're doing this, I, I need to come up with a question here. Yeah, just think of your interview questions. I mean, oh, goodness. Hmm. Nothing like, nothing like uh, coming up with something live. Yeah. You know, oh, you're going to ask something like, what animal would you be? It'd be a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, I, I guess you got to answer that now, too. Uh, I would be a, an alligator. Make me more as a hedgehog man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really? Guess. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hedgehoggy, okay. Prickly, but lovable. lovable. Fair enough. <laughs> Clippy is the window. I love it. Narendev, who is one of our frequent watchers on the channel. Uh, n- nothing wrong. Younger developer. I was going to say he must be younger because he thinks of Git as old. And, and I was talking about a time where Git did not exist. And he's yes. like, what? Yeah. Uh, the, the Windows 95 thing, you know, it was the Office 95, 98, 2000 thing. Yeah. If you used Microsoft Office at all for many years, you had to deal with Clippy. Clippy often got uninstalled very quickly. Yeah. And I mean, to be fair, like, when we were younger and programming uh, computers, we would just like take rocks and mash them together. And that's how you got bits. Yeah, we would actually <laughs> talk to the sand to make it do math. You know, we would teach the sand math and then it would go form silicon and become a processor. Right. <laughs> See, that's not fair. I can't make old people jokes because you, you just, Scott, you already claimed it. <laughs> I mean, it's the hair. Yeah, well, that's fair. It's silvery. Well, uh, we've we've got a little bit of time left. Why, uh, is there uh, any questions from the uh, from from the live stream? Any anybody in chat? Um, I haven't seen any, but anybody want to? Anybody have got a question for either Scott or myself? Or oh, that's right. Chris? Slack bought hip chat away from it last year. I did not know that. I didn't. I, I think I remember that vaguely. Or Atlassian something something. I think Atlassian got tried to figure out an exit for HipChat, and it was Slack. Um, well, now everyone should be using Matrix and and Elements. There there <laughs> should be no other platform out there. No. So I, Narendev actually asked about uh, us using punch cards. So I have a funny story about that. I, I've <laughs> oh, never gosh. used a punch card in production. For I've never used a punch card either. <laughs> but uh, you know who did was my dad. Yeah. And um, we found a like punch card wreath in my grandmother's attic. And I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. And what they did was they just took punch cards and like folded them into cones and stapled them. And then they'd staple it all together into a mm-hmm. circle. Yeah. And then they'd use like a spray paint to spray paint it. And it, it would be like pretty. gold or silver or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And so I said something to my dad about it. And he's like, oh, I got, I got a bunch of punch cards. And sure enough, he handed me the shoebox full of punch cards that was all those uh, Fortran 73 programs Ooh. from like his Ooh. junior year in college. Don't shuffle um, them. Uh, thankfully, this is after the University of Maryland had bought a card numberer. So you, the, every card actually uh-huh. had a number in case you dropped yes. them. Yeah. But he told me a story about the time that he did drop them at four in the morning because that's when he could get compute time at the computer mm-hmm. center. And from then he like drew a diagonal Sharpie line across the top of the deck. That way you could reorder them. And if one was out of order, there'd be like a Sharpie black mark, like way out of the way. Mm-hmm. And you could just figure out where to line it back up again. Anyway, so <clears throat> I have these punch cards that are punched, which also is somewhat magical. Mm-hmm. And around it is the line printed program that was written for the cards that were punched for it. And each card has the instruction written on it too, but it's like, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, Many years ago, well, actually not that many years ago, a long time ago, I wrote something for training and uh, much to my chagrin, it was production for 17 years. And the reason I know it was production for 17 years is because on year 17, they came to me and were like, hey, we need you to make a change. And you were the last one to work on this. (laughs) And I was like, yeah, yeah, I did that in a weekend. Cool. Awesome. Uh, And so I sent back a picture to my boss of me holding a punch card and an exacto knife. And it's like, 
this is what it feels like when you ask me to edit code from 17 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so a long time ago, well, a not so long time ago was three years ago. So I've, I've been at Red Hat for almost 20 years in a Red Hat. Really? Have you really? I have. I did have a short break in the middle for three years, but uh, you go yeah, I originally him? joined Red Hat. No, no, <laughs> I, I, I just needed to break. It wasn't you. It was me. Fair enough. Um, so I, I originally joined Red Hat in July 2001. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was a very different That's company awesome. then. Yeah. I mean, it had just IPO'd. It IPO'd before I had joined. Um, yeah. And because it IPO'd yeah. in 2000 or 99. I distinctly remember because I went to boot camp in 99. I was like, what's the Red Hat stock price? And 160. The next time I got to uh, CNBC, little like scrolling thing, because you know how they used to have them scroll across the bottom of the screen. Yeah. There was Red Hat. It, you know, I should have bought it at, you know, $3 a share because it was up to like one bajillion hundred dollars, you know. <laughs> so uh, when I joined Red Hat, the stock price was $4 a share. <laughs> The previous year, it had been $160 a share. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, let me just say that when I would tag along on sales calls, that was a lot of people let us know how unhappy mm-hmm. they were about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, enough about stock history. Now it's not even a symbol anymore. Sadness mm-hmm. falls over the land. <laughs> Fair point. <sighs> All right. Anything else, Eric? You want to? Say anything witty or fun about the next show? You have no idea what we're going to be doing, I'm sure, but... Um, actually... Uh... Julie? Um, as if I don't have enough tabs open here. I was oh, about wait. to say, you're opening another tab? Actually. Um... <laughs> uh, coming up... Uh... So we've got a we've got a few different ideas. Uh, so yes. here here over the next couple of months, we uh, we're actually looking at doing kind of a day in the life uh, of a Red Hat engineer. Uh, so we talk about we talk about RHEL all the time. We talk about uh, some of the different features and how it fits into the industry. Uh, so we thought it might be fun to bring someone in from engineering to kind of talk about what what do you do every day. What's you know just a, just a day in the life. Um, we've also talked about uh, building building system D unit files. Mm-hmm. And then a uh, little known uh, fact about RHEL 8 is NTPD is not the, the default anymore. Uh, it's nope. uh, crony nowadays. So those yeah. are those are some topics we're considering. And uh, Chris and I are pretty much going to keep the show format exactly how it has been. So if there's any any interviews, if, if there's any topics you'd like to see us cover, would love, uh, would love your feedback. Mm-hmm. Um, Send send those to send those to Chris and send all of your hate mail to Scott and uh, yeah. uh, short at redhat.com for your ideas, <laughs> whatever I can get. Yeah, definitely. Uh, redhat.com for all your hate mail, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> the okay, question Does EBPF help network people at all? Yes. In theory, yes, because it's a kernel module, right? So and this is from you know a Kate's person, uh, so like Kate C C and I Cilium going all in on eBPF is something that they've done recently. Uh, so could you like on a Railbox use eBPF? The answer is yes. Uh, anything that you can do with the kernel can be done in Rail, um, and eBPF. I mean, it's incredibly powerful. It's a great way to do a lot. With network policy and you know firewalling whatever you want to do um that might be a good topic for us to touch on at some point Eric. right i'll write that one down too so we typically work with ebpf as the in kernel virtual machine for performance analytics so there's actually mm-hmm. in the bcc tools there's um you know tcp latency and a variety of other networking information that we can gather from the EPPF virtual machine. And that's typically where I see it used the, to, to most benefit. Mm-hmm. Managing storage with Stratus. Hmm. Be an interesting topic. Okay. We already have a lab for it. 
That's true. We cool. We do. Awesome. Engine storage for Stratus. Um, awesome. Our list of ideas storage. is doubled in size just today. Yeah. So. Look at that. Um, hey, you make me feel so bad. I have I bring nothing to the table, and yet uh, Eric's over here just like cranking out show ideas. <laughs> Hey, you, you've got so another, what I do. You've got another show to create ideas for, okay? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Old man yells at clouds. That's my new show. <laughs> AKA the level up hour. Um, <laughs> so yes, if you want to see Scott in the future, check him out on the level up hour. There's a link there. Um, the whole premise of the level up program is to bring rel admins into containers um so wait we're containerizing systems administrators now maybe that's called an operator <laughs> um <laughs> but uh scott is going to be handling the rel knowledge side of the level up hour and we've teamed him up with jafar Charabi from my team uh who is he's been an essay in like europe's like a number one essay i feel like uh for he did that for years and now he's on my team as a technical marketing manager he's literally an open shift genius so putting them with randy russell the head of gls you know which is global learning services uh putting the three of them together i think will create a powerhouse show for the level up hour so yeah i will uh be producing other shows but yes i've kind of handed that whole show kit and caboodle off Minus the sweet, sweet internet points. We'll keep those going as long as the team wants them. Um, so, yeah. So, Eric will be here in two weeks when we do the show again. And yep. hopefully, we'll have something cool figured out for you. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. Sure, it'll be fine. Eric, Eric is a bundle of ideas if my past working with him has any <laughs> indication. Well, that's good. <laughs> you may not like them all, but they're all ideas. They're I'm all teasing. ideas. I'm teasing. I'm, He's great. I, I've never yeah. claimed any of them were good ideas. I just ideas. Right. <laughs> like when people say, Hey, do you have any ideas? They're not judging quality at that point. Right. <laughs> Dinosaur shooting laser beams. Go. <laughs> but I, I think Chris and I could probably do an hour on, on dinosaurs and laser beams. Probably, uh, we could, yeah. we could interview my, my five-year-old. He's, he's an expert on dinosaurs and laser beams. So there you go. <laughs> That'd be a good interview. <laughs> I like I like turtles too. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm typing something in chat. I'm not sure how to follow that up. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, so, Narendra, uh, to answer your question, I will not be on the level up hour uh, unless they ask me to be. Um, but Red Hat OpenShift is always watching, <laughs> aka the uh, restream account. <laughs> So yeah, so folks, if you have any questions, ideas for future shows, feel free to email me, uh, short at redhead.com. You can find me on Twitter, Chris Short, all squished together as one word. So two S's in the middle there. Uh, Eric, I don't know if you want to give out your Twitter sure. handle or email or whatever. but Yeah, yeah I'm in the, uh, I'm in the uh, live stream Discord channel. Uh, mm -hmm. You can find me on Twitter at ITGuyEric. You can check out my website, itguyeric.com. I've got my branding identical across the board. So if, if there's a platform, I'm probably on it under IT Guy Eric. You can also catch the podcast at, uh, at Pseudo Show Podcast and pseudo.show is the website. I think that's all my, I think that's all my handles. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, uh, it's three o'clock, folks. I think we need to wrap this up because I'm sure I'm late for a meeting. <laughs> Uh, I'm, Thank you I'm about 61 it. minutes late for a meeting, so oh, sweet. there's that. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Yes. Take it easy. Stay Thanks, safe Scott. out there, folks. We'll see you. We'll see you, Chris.